Hello. So maybe we can say a hello to everybody. We are very happy to be here for the sixth live Ooh, session already. already. <laughs> and this one will be about music. So we are very lucky because today we will have two experts in Braille and music because we have Mary. And yeah, yes, you are an expert <laughs> in both. And we also have Catherine Leonida all the way um, from New Zealand. She's really opposite to us because we are in France. Can you hear us, Catherine? Yes, I can, thank you. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, maybe um, while everybody's joining, we, we can take one or two minutes to share a poll so that we will know exactly who you are if you would like to answer the questions. In fact, that's really easy questions. The first one is about where you are from. So you choose the continent where you live. And Catherine, you can answer because usually we don't have a lot of people from O'Shea. <laughs> so it would be great. And uh, the second question is um, about the MOOC, the online course that we are having. Uh, are, are you or have you uh, attended the course or do you plan to do so? The question number three is about what is your job title? That's always interesting to know mm -hmm. what is your profession. And the last question, that's the last one. Yeah, yeah okay, that's the, <laughs> we have three questions. So we will take maybe one minute for that to be sure. And of course, we are uh, very happy to be here live. That's a live session. and your comments, your question are as important as our input. So it could be great if you can ask questions to when Mary will speak or Catherine will speak, then they can answer. You can make your comments um, about, also share your experience, that would be great. I already have one question. Yeah. Catherine, what time is it for you? <laughs> it's 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very brave <laughs> and uh, so yes, we're, uh, maybe, we're at the we're at the beginning of tomorrow for you <laughs> yeah exactly and, and what is nice i can see that there are people from north america and they are uh, at the beginning of their day <laughs> so yeah <laughs> uh, more than 10 hour difference okay so we can end the poll maybe to see the um uh, mark yeah. um yeah. Unfortunately, for some reason, I can't answer the poll, so I'm not sure if you can click Oceania for yeah. me. <laughs> because you are a special guest, so that's yeah. why maybe you can answer. <laughs> no, no problem. So just to let you know, we are, uh, you are 35% coming from North America, 59% uh, from Europe, and 6% from Asia. So we know that we have one, per one person from Oceania and nobody from South America or Africa. About if you have attended the course, 47% of you say yes and 41% no, but I plan to do so 12%. So um, maybe of course, if you would like to attend the course, you can find all the relevant information on our website, legobreadbricks.com and everything, all the, the course, everything is free. And uh, about your job title, 24% are TVI. Great. I like to say that because I am a TVI. <laughs> we have mainstream teachers, and that's really nice, 12%. Teaching assistant, 29%, really welcome. We have O&M, 12%. No OT. No. For oh, you, <laughs> <laughs> because Mary is an OT. And others, 47%. So once again, if you want to tell us more information about you, your position, if you are specially answered order, you can uh, put that in the chat. But maybe that's time to start. Just last information, the session is recorded. So if by chance you would like to see it again, or uh, if you would like to share this information with your um, other colleagues that's of course they are welcome everything will be on our web uh, youtube channel mm. so mary are you ready yes i am okay so <laughs> i think we are ready for braille and music music oh so that's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah a heavy <laughs> schedule we can say because we had um 
so many ideas, I might say. And today we're going to present one amazing with Catherine and just started to talk a little bit about bread, bricks and music because there are different things we can understand. Um, maybe we can think that we, we can play music with bread bricks like instruments for example that's what we did in one um, activity called musical letters and in fact you play something like beatbox and yeah. you make a sound with one letter one character and so on uh, maybe someone one day will compose a piece of music uh, throwing bread bricks or <laughs> touching them we'll see but so far uh, for today we wanted to start saying a few words about the braille notation, uh, the, the music notation in braille, and just starting with, um, with braille, because he invented braille, the braille code, but also the way to write music in braille. And that's very important uh, to understand that, to know that, because then you will understand uh, a, a few tricky things. <laughs> Because Louis Braille was French, like us. Yeah. <laughs> and he used to, um, he was really a great musician. He played a lot of different instruments. And then he started at the same time to invent his alphabet and the Braille code, but also music. And as he was French, he used the same way to write the, the notes as the one we use now, which is Do, Ré, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, with my French accent. <laughs> But uh, when you think of how we write in Western countries, I'm not gonna talk about Asian way of writing music because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> but in Western um, music notation, the notation we have is very special and, and really uh, using the sight. So the, the help of the eye. So we have a way to write music like drawings. We use, in fact, a staff or stave. It depends on which country you live, uh, with a combination of five lines and um, lines and spaces between the lines. Sorry, and you draw some notes on these lines. So the notes represent the the round shape represents the notes. Now it's round. Before it was square. Um, and first, when you see where is the note on these lines or between these lines, you know what note is it. So you have an indication of uh, the pitch of the note, which, which one it is, but also the duration. Because if you have a round shape, uh, white in the middle, that's a long one. If it is black, that's something else. Sometimes you can have a tail um, or and many other things. So that gives you quickly many indications uh, on the note and on what the composer wants you to play. So that's really important to understand that it is special and it is complex, but really quick. You have a few information in Braille. That's not going to be the same because we have then to transcribe a special way of drawing the music to a linear one. So it will be really the combination of many different Braille characters. And just to show you my screen, no, screen. Here you have the way we write uh, music. So starting with Do, Ré, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, and then Do again. It's uh, written on that stuff. Um, and that was what Louis Braille knew. He had a way of touching the different notes to understand them. And then he started with that. So he said Do, the first note, will be in the scale will be letter d in brain so do is d and then he went uh, he he took the letter after to make re so do is d re is e mi is f and so on so far that's okay <laughs> we can understand that but then what is a bit tricky is that in many other countries, instead of, instead of using do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, we use letters. So do is C, si, re is D, mi is E, F, fa, this one is easy, <laughs> sol, G, la is A, and C is B. So that means when you look at my <laughs> sheet of paper here, that's a 
for blue braille, that's a D, so it's a note DO. But in English, you write it C. Do you understand, Mark, the yeah, problem yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so on. We have letter, um, in fact, note D, that is RE, which is written dot one and dot five, and so on. So first thing to understand when you will have to write music with um, bricks or um, braid character, you have to learn really something else. And what is interesting is that using these um, kind of letters, so do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, you see that there is always, um, there is never in fact dot three and dot six. And that was really helpful for Rebrain because he then said, okay, the first four uh, dots on top, so dot one, dot two, dot four, dot five will indicate the scale, but dot three and dot six will be the duration. So if you have a note like this one, we call it C or Do, and if you add dot three and six, that's the full length of the note. If you add only dot three, it's half the duration, only dot six, it's a quarter of the duration, and no dot three, no dot six, the eighth. Do you have a so, question? Yes. No, just to understand if all the, the, the information are in the same cell, we have, for example, letter C and dot. Yes, exactly. Uh, so you will have a short example here, but I'm not sure you can see, letter do, um, note do, a full note do, will be so letter D dot one dot four dot five and you will add also okay. the three dot six to indicate that's the full duration of this uh, where is my camera of this note okay the first one so if you take the bread bricks just to be sure we understand <laughs> yeah the first one how you would you call it mark in French do do Exactly. That's so this it, yeah, is do. Yeah. The second one, dot one and dot five, will be re. re. Exactly. So what am I doing? Is that I've added some stickers at the bottom of the brick to hide the characters that is written because it's confusing for me. Yeah. And I'm writing the name of the do, uh, note in French. So do re. Then we have me. Me is dot one, dot two, dot four. Then fa. Yeah. Sol, la, and si. And if we do the same for the other way of writing the notes, so we the start C. C. I have understood. So yes. <laughs> D, D. Yeah. E. F. We have the same as fado. That's the easy one. G, and A and B. Yeah. I think, Mark, you wonder why A is not do. No, you don't. <laughs> ah, yeah, the same. <laughs> no. Because A, it's la, and that's the most important note for orchestra to be able to tune together. So okay. that's the one we always rely on. It's 440 hertz. That's the um, how we know which one it is. And when you play in an orchestra, you always use this one to, to tune. So if I want to go quick, quick, just to give Catherine the stage, uh, I've just prepared a small example you, using the notes and the letter, and I'm just going to sing it. So each of my bricks here are notes, and they have the same duration. So it's easy, and it is. Uh, maybe. No, I was just thinking, if, if it's, uh, is it a song or something like it that? It is a song. I'm going to so sing it. and you. So maybe uh, if you can find uh, yeah. the title and share in the chat, that okay. can be a contest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So okay, this is ready. fa 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 do re re do la la sol sol fa. I'm missing a fa. <laughs> Who knows the song? <laughs> maybe fa, once fa, again. Fa, dun, 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 dun. Catherine, do you know that? I do. I'm, 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 I'm scrutinizing the chat. Oh, oh we oh, have it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Perfect. Old MacDonald. Right. So that's one way to use the bricks to make the, <laughs> the music. But what if it was not always the same duration? So we just thought of having a quick uh, test with <laughs> using different piles of bricks. 
So just placing nodes, but the first one is, a ma make, is made by a file of four bricks, um, then one brick, uh, three bricks, for, yeah. sorry, one, four, three, one, and four. Okay, yeah. And it will indicate how long you have to stay on these notes. For, for example, it is um, me, so, so, me, re, do. So I have me, do, do, sol, one, two, three, four, me, re, one, two, three, four. So just one way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. To show you, yeah. so this is uh, from Dvorak Symphony, well known, uh, named um, uh, from the New World. I only have it in French. French yeah. <laughs> Symphony du Nouveau Monde. <laughs> yeah, so that was one suggestion we had to indicate the duration. But I think maybe. And I have a question do we have to be um, to sing as well as you do to no. be able to read that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I will never be able to do that. <laughs> okay great so we have many people that recognize oh, yeah okay perfect okay so yeah that was one short explanation yeah. not so short but just to explain how it works and how um, difficult it can be but also possible to use braille bricks yeah. to write okay. music and Catherine you have also a great thing to share with us uh, on how you used Braille Bricks for music on a high level. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, shall I start sharing my screen now? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So my presentation is about using Lego Braille Bricks for harmonic analysis in um, NCEA, which is a... Um, um, uh, qualification in New Zealand um, music in year 13. Um, so I'm Catherine Leonida, I'm a senior resource teacher vision for Blends Hamilton in New Zealand and the presentation features a, a Blends year 13 learner named Brianna. I'm just going to um, share with you a, a traditional greeting from uh, to honour the heritage of my country. Mm. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Catherine Leonida tōku ingoa, nō England o ku tīpuna, kei te noho o ki ōtorahanga Aotearoa, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. And um, nice. I can yeah. show you, I didn't think of actually putting a little spot on the map, but if you look at the, um, the top island, which is the North Island of New Zealand on the screen there, um, where I am, is about halfway between um, the lake that's in the middle of the island and Hamilton, which is, um, okay. I'm not sure if you can see that kind of uh, on the left hand side there going up. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's where I am at the moment. <laughs> um, and as I said, I'm a resource teacher vision um, working for BLENS, which stands for Blind and Low Vision Education Network New Zealand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I have to click on the screen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to um, share a few notes first. Um, I just need to move my... Um, little video panel out of the way. Um, so um, yeah, I just wanted to share some notes with you first that um, helps you to get an overall picture of um, how I was using the Lego Braille bricks um, in, in this particular situation. So Brianna uses Braille to access the curriculum, including music. She accesses the curriculum using a Polaris Braille note taker, and um, there are glimpses of that of the Polaris in some of the photos. Um, she also uses a laptop with JAWS screen reader and does have um, music software, Braille Music Editor 2, um, so that she can input Braille music and the teacher's able to see that as print music um, and vice versa. Um, 
So Brianna is familiar with Braille music code and rules, and the Lego Braille bricks were used as a tool for a specific set of activities. They weren't used to introduce her to the music code or to notate mm -hmm. Braille music. She is able to read and write Braille music in the conventional linear fashion, including the correct Braille notation of chords, using interval and octave markers and accidentals. This presentation is based on events last year when Brianna was in year 13, which in New Zealand is the final year of school. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lego Braille bricks were used as an additional tool for Brianna to experience and understand how the musical chords were built. This was very task specific and used for high level harmonic analysis, which for a learner who accesses music through Braille generally has to happen cognitively. The bricks provided a concrete experience and a good representation of how print music functions as well. Um, Brianna is very curious, um, often asking questions about how the, the Braille music and print music relate. Um, I, I'm sorry, I possibly should have said before, um, Brianna has no vision. Um, the exercises shared with you in this presentation are activities that are separate to the written notation of chords in Braille. I know I've just said that in quite a few different ways, but mm -hmm. I just really wanted to make sure that people understand that we weren't, um, because we're using a different spatial way to represent Braille music in this activity. Um, and it didn't take away from her understanding of how you actually write linear Braille chords. Yeah. <clears throat> Harmonic analysis still requires audiation, and Brianna was also given regular op opportunities to practice this important skill. So why Lego Braille bricks? Um, apart from the fact that um, I was so excited when we received our kits in New Zealand and I was telling um, Brianna that they had arrived and she, she said, oh, I wish I was four. And, um, and we, we, so we sort of had a bit of a think about how she might be able to use them and came up with this idea and um, we were able to get a, a kit um, to try out and it worked really, really well. Um, so although Braille music is notated in linear fashion, with Lego Braille bricks, each note can be considered individually and spatially in its place in the chord. Um, and I've got a photo here of Brianna um, uh, using um, the um, bricks to, to, to build, um, for want of a better word, um, a, a concrete um, chord with notes spaced vertically. Um, do you think that it helped her to uh, engage with her sighted peers, um, maybe to share the different ways of writing the code? Vertical yes. or yeah. Yes, there were often questions, uh, well, especially when we first started using the, um, the bricks, um, there were a lot of questions from her peers as to, um, you know, what, what did it mean and how did it work? And um, they actually ended up learning more um, about the Braille Music Code than yeah. they had previously. <laughs> um, and oh, because there's often curiosity and, and questions to yeah. her about the Braille that she's using, but this was particularly interesting to them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why it's great to have this kind of tangible tool for both sighted and non-sighted to be able to share the different ways they write. Yes. And I have um, a question about the base plate. Is there a reason why you use a small one or no? no? Uh, yes, I think actually, I think that's on the next slide, Mark. Um, okay, great. Oh, okay, oh okay. no, no, it's on a, it's on a later slide. Um, but yeah, I'll just no say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, so um, the addition of Braille symbols for interval and octave markers and accidentals means that where chords span across more than one stave in um, conventional linear Braille notation, the notes don't necessarily line up. Uh, vertically. While this isn't a problem when you're simply reading the Braille music, Brianna wanted to find an alternative way to work with the notes in each chord she was required to analyse. So this topic um, that she was learning at school and was going to be doing exams in at the end of the year um, is very heavily based on um, chords and the analysis of them and the, um, the creation of them. Mm. Um, Brianna likes using Lego Braille bricks to complete chords and or harmonies, 
as she can add notes to the various parts or voices and immediately check her work both by chord um, vertically and by part horizontally. Um, and in a video we have later, she actually mentions that. <clears throat> so in this photo on the screen at the moment, um, you can see that we um, were able to actually um, um, notate in a way, <laughs> um, or build, build um, Lego Braille brick chords um, with re reasonable complexity in terms of how much information is there under Brianna's fingertips. Um, but as you can see, um, she is using her fingers across more than one brick at a time um, and sort of able to manipulate the, the spatial um, layout, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe Catherine, we have one question in the chat from <clears throat> Benjamin. Uh, yeah. Is it that way easy to recognize fifth and octave parallels for her? Um, not really, because um, by, by building the chords in this way, um, what it's giving her is the ability to see which voice it's in or part it's in, um, mm. you know, whether it's soprano, alto, tenor, bass, for example. I'm not sure if those words would be consistent across languages, but... Yeah, um, they are. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, of course, they're Italian. But, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so it's more about the position in the chord um, as opposed to the position in pitch, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, and um, the um, um, if you're able to see the photo um, to Brianna's far right, um, you can see some, some white paper there, and that's actually the hard copy of the exam. Um, so she did, um, I, I actually talk about this a little bit further on too, but basically we, um, she did have um, access to hard copy Braille music to back up more information. Um, and as I say, this, this particular exercise wasn't so much about identifying intervals, however, that would be going on inside her head, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and that's where, um, so uh, Wendy Richards, who is our um, Braille music specialist in New Zealand, um, she um, does a lot of work with our learners around audiation from quite early on um, with music. And that's something that Brianna is um, quite skilled in, yeah. in um, thinking through um, pitch and intervals when she's manipulating the notes. Yeah. Um, I hope, so I hope that answers Benjamin's question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, again, I guess it's the, the fact that we're using this for a specific purpose that allowed, allowed her to uh, analyze the chord structure. Um, and yeah, the relationship to the, to the music was probably happening more in, um, with her audiating in her head as we went, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, um, and just to answer your question, uh, in fact, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin yes, he, he, thank you for the answer. Oh, cool, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, okay, so um, throughout Brianna's learning and practice with harmonic analysis, um, she had access to music extracts and hard copy braille. In some cases, these extracts used conventional linear chord notation, and in some, each voice was separated into a different line, as shown below. So um, on this slide, I have um, a, a short extract from um, a, a piece in one of the exam papers from last year. Um, and um, it shows that um, for the purposes of this question, they did in fact represent each voice um, on, a, on a separate line. Mm. Um, and that was explained in a transcriber's note um, at the beginning of the paper. Um, and because they have used um, spatial indicators, um, this is actually reasonably well aligned. But um, for those of you who um, are able to, to read the Braille Music Code in this extract, you'll see that um, the the values of the the pitch values of the notes are quite well aligned in this extract, but there's a lot of other information as well. Um, and um, so, as as I go on, I'll explain how we left some of that information out when we we're using the bricks. 
But as I said, Brianna could refer back to the hard copy braille and also ask me questions um, to just confirm those other details as she went. Um, so here we go, Mark. So we used um, the base plates that allowed um, four notes to be placed vertically. Um, these base plates were ones that I just happened to find um, commercially available, although I, I believe they're actually a different brand. Um, but um, they were very convenient in size because they allowed um, like a stack of <laughs> four mm -hmm. notes to be placed vertically. Um, so we found that this helped. We did start out using the larger base plates, um, which allowed more, more chords to, to be placed um, horizontally. Mm -hmm. However, the small base, base plate really helped with efficiency in the sense that it, um, the orienting the, the notes to a smaller area that exactly fitted four bricks was, was really helpful for um, Brianna. Um, we used two base plates so that while Brianna was working on one set, I could be preparing the next set. Um, so this, so the photo in, on this slide shows that um, I have some. Uh, this was a um, an excess, uh, like a workbook that Brianna is working through. Um, she has the the Braille copiers, in fact, under the Lego Braille bricks at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and she has her Polaris note taker there because she's um, working things out and then writing her answers into that in a, a BRF file. Um, and um, um, and you may be able to see that there's some print music underneath the base plate on the left, which is what I'm working from. Mm. Um, so um, it, the print copy of the same workbook. So um, what I would do would be to look at what notes the exercise is giving in the workbook and place those exact notes in the same places um, spatially on the baseboard um, so that Brianna was being given the exact same information that everyone else was getting. Um, and then um, I would be careful to look at each, each question and check whether or not the question actually, for example, if it actually said this extract is in G major, or if it simply showed the key signature in, in print notation, so that when, um, in order for efficiency, Brianna might just simply ask me the key signature or I would say it as I pass it to her. So I had to just be careful to make sure that if, depending on what was in the question, that I would either say, for example, um, uh, um, you know, this is G major or mm -hmm. there is one key, uh, there is one sharp in the key signature. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, um, it, it was actually really also quite useful for helping me to practice the way that I would be speaking in the exam situations, um, in you know, to practice that in class. So, um, and depending on the question, we used one base plate per chord or per cadence or per bar. Um, and that worked really well. And the reason that the, the notes are spaced as they are um, with a space between the notes um, on the base plate on the left there is because this particular, um, exercise had some um, non-chord tones in it that she also needed to add. Um, and it, very coincidentally and helpfully, um, the chords were um, on crotchet beats um, and the non-chord tones were quaver beats in between. Okay. So spatially that actually worked really, really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's also one thing uh, we know that people says you cannot do uh, all the all the brain notation you want with the brain bricks because you don't have all the characters you need. And um, you know, we made an online course where we have a video and we share with you our way to make your own braille bricks uh, just using mm. files and tiles with node so you can make your own braille brick and then add dot three or dot six or both if you need uh, to change them mm. we're gonna add the link at the end yeah Very um, good. I, think. <laughs> I think the other thing i should say too is that um all of the ways that um, that I'm discussing that we used the Lego Braille bricks was very much a conversation between Brianna and myself. Um, uh, so there's there's a lot of Brianna's voice in the way that this was done, um, mm -hmm. and we would try something and it wouldn't 
maybe wasn't quite efficient enough and we'd tweak it. And so things like being able to use those non-chord tones in a space in between the chords was quite helpful. Yeah. Um, Perfect. So, yeah. So it was a, it was a, um, a developing process with um, that, lots of input from, from Brianna. That makes <laughs> us really happy because we, we know Lego rubrics can be used for high level topics mm. and yours in, yeah. is one and it's great. <laughs> Um, uh, so when providing notes or chords that contained accidentals not in the key signature, I stuck blue tack onto the brick. Um, I'm not sure if blue tack is a universal thing. Um, yeah. Do, How do you put we can yeah. say? <laughs> so yeah, so like sticky. Um, tack. Look, yeah. Yeah. Tack, tacky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and in fact, there's a little dot of it in, in the, the photo there on one of the bricks. Um, so again, this was something that was discussed between Brianna and myself that um, if um, if there was going to be an accidental that wasn't in the key signature, I would stick blue tack onto it and then verbally stipulate which accidental it was, mm -hmm. um, and then Brianna would just would, would was able to hold that information in her head while she analysed that particular base plate. Um, and we had previously agreed to give further detail verbally, um, so the note name is being represented and the place in the chord by the bricks um, and we're we're actually leaving out information on note value octave mm -hmm. um, and and things like that and an accidental if it's in the key signature yeah. um, in order to be able to use the lego braille bricks without any further adaptation um, and as I said before, Brianna was able to confirm these additional details from her hard copy braille or um, from quickly checking with a question to me from her cognitive skills also <laughs> she she knows exactly what she needs yes yes yeah. that's right um so uh once again um uh, referring to what um marie said earlier um that we used the bricks um d e f g h i j to re represent the music notes um so we now understand why we did that <laughs> um and i have to say um Marie, i didn't even think actually of putting stickers on to make it a little bit quicker um for me <laughs> yeah um, and, and, and sake of inclusion but, yeah if you want to yes yeah um and um so um, I was able to work with Brianna in um, many of her music classes and um, so, uh, but if, if I had been, um, if I had been leaving the Braille Bricks um, yeah. with, with a, a, a teacher aide, for example, um, or, the, or the music teacher, then that would have been a very, very good idea. And um, <laughs> I'll definitely tuck that one away in my in my head for future uh, reference. <laughs> to explain that D is a C and E is a D. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it, you know, it, it didn't matter to, to Brianna or I, but if, if you weren't yeah. familiar with the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with that, it would certainly make that a lot more help, uh, a lot more useful. Um, so we tried a few different options. We actually began with um, just having stacks of the notes um, along the top of the, um, uh, you know, the, the base plate that comes with the kit. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, we found that it was actually much quicker rather than having to extract a brick off the top of a tower um, <laughs> and, and potentially knock another one off or, you know, um, we found that a partition box worked much better. And that was, again, was um, very much Brianna's voice saying, I, I don't think this is the best way of doing it. Um, and um, so I used a container with five by two partition sections and filled them left to right with the Lego Braille bricks representing the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. In the remaining spaces, I placed a couple of strips of non-slip matting, which, um, Brianna could if she chose use to sort of assemble a couple of notes on okay. um, and um, some blue tack and the Lego brick separator. Um, I asked Brianna to talk through her process on camera. Um, I must say I also invited her to join us today but it, it is 4 a.m. so <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> um, so the video clips, these were, we, we made these video clips last year while she was still um, very much in the middle of practicing these, uh, using these bricks for this purpose. 
Um, so I wanted to be able to show um, how the Lego Braille bricks worked for her. Um, please note that in these videos, because she was thinking about her explanation to the audience, um, this did slow her efficiency down a little. Um, uh, she was usually a, a little quicker in um, completing the exercises. Um, the first video clip shows her working out a chord inversion. And I just got a little note saying, please excuse us being a little bit tongue tied because it was it was the first video that we did and we were both sort of a bit, um, maybe not quite ready, <laughs> um, but it still shows her thought process well. Um, the second video shows Brianna harmonizing a chord progression and talking through some of her reasoning. Um, and um, the Lego Braille bricks used in these videos were used as an exact representation of the musical notes shown in the Braille score, although the bricks represent note names rather than intervals. Um, okay, so that leads us into the first video. So this is Brianna, and um, the the video sound is a little quiet, um, but I do have it turned up, the volume turned up, so um, please be with us and I hope that you're able to hear it well. <laughs> Okay, so this chord is in a piece that, whose key signature is D minor, and you need to work out the Roman numerals for this chord. Okay. So reading this from the bottom up, the notes are F, D, and A. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and make notes into a triad. So I'm going to find this D, F, D, A. So then I would put these in order. So Yes. Oh, and I'll just say there too, I like how she self-corrected the placement there. <laughs> um, then F. And then A. So if I read that from the bottom up, it's D, F, A, and that would be a D minor chord. So in Roman numerals, that is chord one. And the chord on the left, how, how would you notate the chord on the left in Roman numerals? Oh yes, so it's still a D minor chord, but since F is the bottom note and not D, um, that would be notated as one B. Excellent. So, um, shall I move straight on to the second yeah. video? Yeah. Yep. Cool. I think this will be <laughs> nice to see the inversion of the chord. So the same three notes, but in different orders to, to have the fundamental one, the one we find more usual. Mm. But I think the explanation was okay. Right. So this yeah. chord yeah. is oh, in a sorry. Piece on. whose key signature is D minor, <laughs> and you need to work out. My apologies. There we go. So this one is harmonizing a chord progression. Um, so this uh, Brianna is being required to to work out the rest of the chords in this particular section uh, exercise. Okay, so Brianna, I've given you um, chords one, four, five in the key of G major, um, and you need to complete a four-part harmony. Okay, so first thing I'll do is figure out what chords one, four, five in G major actually are. So chord one is going to be G major, chord four B C major, and chord five is going to be D major. So now that I've figured that out, um, what I do is I create a bass line where I put in the root notes of each chord. And start with G. And C. 
see. Um, and then day. So now that I've got those, I think about what notes are actually in those chords. And I look at the notes I have at the moment and I figure out what notes are actually missing from the chord. So let's say if I look at the first one, I've got G and D. So somewhere in there, there needs to be a B, but I, I need to make sure, um, because one of the rules when you're making four part harmonies is that you have to try to keep the intervals sort of as small as possible. So what I do is just put another G because you can double up octaves. And then In there. Um, then the next chord, uh, C. So, so if I say C and E, so obviously it needs to be G. And now I've got C. E, G, but still so got space for one note, so we'll put another C in. Um, in the last chord, D major, I've got two Ds at the moment, so obviously the two notes I need would be F sharp. Well, this isn't actually an F sharp, it's just an F, but since I know what accidentals are in the key signature, I'm just going to pretend it's an F sharp. So D, F sharp. E. And A. And yeah, there we have it. Nice. And um, how does it help using Lego Braille bricks to construct those chords as opposed to um, your Polaris? Um, well, the thing with the Polaris is like it's good, but you can't view multiple lines at the same time. So you actually have to scroll up and down to compare the notes. With this, it's good because I can literally just run my hand up and down. And I can also go across, or I can be kind of comparing multiple things at the same time. So mm. I might be looking at, say, the alto part with one hand, and then I might be looking at, say, two notes in the soprano part with the other hand. Cool. So it's actually quite efficient, isn't it? Mm. Um, I was just thinking as well, that, um, when this video started that I didn't mention that one of the things that we um, found very useful in terms of using the smaller base plate um, is that um, you you may have noticed that when I passed Brianna that base plate all I said was which chords they were and which um, key signature it was I didn't say where those notes were in the chord so I didn't say this is you've I've the you know the notes on there are in the soprano part for example mm -hmm. um and that's because um we we realized quite early on that one of the benefits of doing, doing it this way was that um Brianna could tell because of the um and um that she would be able to tell from where it was on the base plate which voice it was, uh, which voice the note was in. Um, so that actually sort of added to the efficiency a little bit as well, because um, it was a piece of information she could find out by, by touch. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, 
That was great. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, it's done it again. So um, I just wanted to say, um, you know, thank you to, to everyone for your attention and um, special thanks to Brianna for allowing me to share a piece of her learning journey with you. And um, the final photo shows her um, using a, 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 a um, the big base plate and a, a much larger <laughs> array of, of bricks and to Polaris and her hard copy braille all at the same time, um, multitasking as our braille students often do. <laughs> I'm so, sure you yeah, can thank, say, thank you very much. I'm sure you can say thank you to Brianna for us, for all of us. Yeah, that's I will. <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. And thank you also to you, Catherine, to be. That, that was really interesting to see an example of using Lego Braille Bricks in a high level music or whatever subject is, but mm -hmm. that's really, really interesting. So thank you. And uh, maybe that's time to conclude because uh, we have seen many things and that's, yeah, almost time is over. It's always too short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can so just... I'll, I'll just stop sharing. Yeah. yeah, great. And we can <laughs> maybe just invite you. I have made um, and put the information in the chat if you want to join us for the last session mm -hmm. of this uh, school year. In fact, in Europe, uh, it will be about orientation and mobility and daily living skill. And it will be uh, Friday, June the 10th. And you have the, the link, the direct link. And we also, of course, will have experts from Canada and France mm -hmm. this time. So we are traveling everywhere in the world, <laughs> thanks to those live sessions and thanks to you. So once again, Catherine, thank you very much. Marie, thank you too. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Catherine. And hope to see thank, you. Thank you for all. the opportunity to share. Yeah. Oh, you're more well than welcome. It was our pleasure. <laughs> and see you uh, next month, maybe, or for the live session. I'm, I'm not sure you will be brave also to wake up every 10 of each month, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>